did get a lot of questions along the lines of how do you read in the bath and I could never read in the bath without getting my book wet and Zoe you are so beautiful and brilliant and I wish I was just like you and because I am beautiful and brilliant as well as extremely generous I thought today I would put together the definitive how-to guide on how to read in the bath. YouTube, it's Zoe, and welcome to week two of the Owl's Magical Readathon. In case you didn't watch last week's vlog, the Owl's Magical Readathon is a month long readathon inspired by the Owl's exams from Harry Potter. There are 12 book prompts that match the 12 classes at Hogwarts, and I am currently halfway through The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon, which is my book for astronomy. I'm going for a wizarding career, and that one is in the Department of Mysteries. I want to be an unspeakable, and that means I need to read four more books. Four more books are required. So I finished Charms and I still have to read a book from Defense Against the Dark Arts, History of Magic, Potions, and Transfiguration. My goal for this week is to try to read as much as possible, which is kind of the goal for all readathons, but I really didn't try to read that much last week. I was easing into the readathon, but now I'm ready to go full force. It would be nice to get halfway through the prompts because we are going to be halfway through the month, but I mean, I don't know. Also, I just remembered that tomorrow I have jury duty. I am 23 years old and this is my third time being summoned for jury duty. And my sister is three years older than me and has only been summoned once. My dad's only been summoned four or five times. How is this fair? Why do they want me so badly? Jury duty makes me so anxious. I know it's my civic duty and it will help to keep things impartial, um, but I cannot have someone's life in my hands. Kids, a message from your elder. Don't get older. Don't become an adult. So much responsibility will be thrust upon you and you will not be ready. But maybe they'll hate me, but it is still today. So we have to get stuff done today. It is currently 5.45. I am done with the first rough draft of last week's weekly vlog. I am going to do my final edit of that and then hopefully I will finish The Sun is Also a Star so that I can start with a new book tomorrow during jury duty. Whoopee. <laughs> It's now 8.15 p.m. and I am still editing this vlog. I can edit for days and I'll still not be done. I've been editing since 9 a.m. with this one video and I'm still not done. So I think I'm going to stop editing tonight and I'm going to spend the rest of the night reading because otherwise I will not fall asleep until I finish editing this. My perfectionism really is great sometimes. I hope to finish The Sun is also a star tonight. I have less than 200 pages and I'm really enjoying it, but I also am trying to get on a good sleep schedule this week. This is the week that I turn into a new person, a new well-rested person. Whoa! I'm just going to read and see where the night takes me, baby. Ugh, I hated that. I'm never gonna say baby again. <laughs> also, I finally got to color in one of the potions bottles because I finished charms last week, and I think it's so cute. I'm trying to make it kind of themed to the book that I read. I'm going to go make some hot chocolate with cinnamon because it is 20 times better when you put a little bit of cinnamon in your hot chocolate. Take it from me. Hello. 
It is past midnight. I just finished The Sun is Also a Star. And that ending was so great. I am not going to spoil this book for you, but I very much recommend it. I came into this book expecting one thing and it turned into something much more than just like a, a teenage romance book. If the ending happened the way I was expecting it to going into it, I wouldn't have liked it as much. I really liked the choices that Nicola Yoon made. How do you go to bed after feeling this many emotions? I am dead. Pleased to meet you. It is Tuesday and luckily I did not have to go to jury duty today. I did not know that they usually ask for more jurors than they actually need just in case of emergency. So I was one of those emergency people and good thing nobody did any crimes today so I didn't have to go to court. Thank you criminals for taking a day off just for me. I truly let out a breath I did not know I was holding. So I finished The Sun is Also a Star last night. I also filled out the potions bottle. It came out a little messy, but it's still fun. It looks kind of tie-dye-y, but that means that I have finished two classes so far. So I think that already means that I got an acceptable on all of my OWL. So I can just stop now. Be okay with mediocre? No. Not here on Red by Zoe. We're going for gold. So let's pick the next book I'll be reading. I think I want to go for another required class. So I still need to finish History of Magic, which means a book that's more than 10 years old. Potions, I need to read a sequel. Transfiguration, I need to read a book with the red cover. Oh, Defense Against the Dark Arts. So that means I would need to read Ruin and Rising. But that means first I need to read Siege and Storm. That's a sequel, so it could count for potions. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I need to read this. I need to. So why delay the inevitable? Why Why don't we just read it? I don't know why I have so many negative thoughts towards this series already. I only read the first book, Shadow and Bone, and I thought it was okay. It wasn't great, it wasn't mind-blowing, but it was okay. Just the thought of continuing with the series I've been feeling negatively towards it because everybody's told me to feel negatively towards it. Am I actually against this series? I don't think I am. I think it's perfectly okay. You know what we're gonna do right now? We're going to do something really exciting that fills me with a lot of joy. We're going to pick the color for Siege and Storm for my daily page counts. Of course we need to pick a green, but what color green? So this looks like a pastel green. Do you agree? I can't hear you. You'll need to speak up a little bit more. Oh, something that I didn't show you last vlog was my 2019 reviews notebook. So I write down every single book that I read in the year and then I write down my notes on it while I'm reading it. But this is also where I color code. So here on the front page, I use the color that I assign for each book to write down every book that I've read so far this year. Why do I write it down and also have this bookshelf? Can't tell ya. They both are different in my eyes. <laughs> I just love writing things down and making them look pretty. So we can see what my last green color was because I don't like to use the same color for too many books. I like to keep it nice and varied. So this, I just used this. This one is, oh, that matches really well though. <laughs> Dilemma. This one is more of a mint and it fits the front pretty well. And I haven't used this one in a while. So Siege and Storm is going to be mint green. Wasn't that the most exciting minute of your life? Here's the front page of my reading journal. I actually forgot to write down The Sun is Also a Star after I finished reading it. So let's do that right now in the purple I selected for the book. Now it's complete. Okay, moving on. Here are my notes from all the books I've read so far this year. I use these notes when I'm doing my wrap ups for the month. I didn't write down any notes during my 24 hour readathon. What types of thoughts am I going to have on Fox in Socks by Dr. Seuss? Here's my notes for The Night Circus and for The Sun is Also a Star. 
And here is where we're going to write the notes for Siege and Storm. So that's all I do to set it up. It's not hard at all, it just helps me keep my thoughts in order. This obviously is when I am starting the book, I will put when I finish the book. It's also the 31st book that I've read this year, so that is exciting! I thought I'd share with you what I do with my bullet journal and my reading journal, just to give you a few ideas if you're looking for a new way to organize your reading. but. Whatever works for you, works for you. For example, you may hate color coding. I don't trust you as a person because who doesn't love color coding? But I mean, as long as it works for you. Oh goodness, I forgot that I get to pick a new bookmark for my new book. Obviously, this is a book for potions, so I think we have to pick Snape as the bookmark. I'm Snape, the potions master. Let me know down below, what is your opinion on Snape? He is a very divisive figure. It's not like Dolores Umbridge or Voldemort where nobody likes him, but there are some real Snape stands out there. I am not one of them. I personally don't think that one good deed completely erases a thousand bad deeds, especially ones that are aimed at Neville who didn't do anything. Let me know down below. Let's start some fights in the comments. Snape and I are gonna go read now. Bye. Happy Wednesday. Did you see the picture? of the black hole. I wonder if it's... I just finished editing my collab, the last collab with Haley and Hannah. I only read 23 pages of Siege and Storm last night. I went to bed at like 9.30 p.m., probably like 10. Still, way earlier than I usually do. I fell asleep while reading this. Actually, I read the first couple of pages and I was so confused. I only read the first book, Shadow and Bone, back in January, the end of January, and I completely forgot what happened. I forgot what the characters' names were except for the Darkling. I forgot why she was where she is at the beginning of this book, but luckily, Recaptains, they had an entire summary of Shadow and Bone, so I read that. But you know what's fun? Four o'clock my time, so in just a couple of minutes, on the Magical Readathon Twitter, I will link all of the Magical Readathon stuff down below in the description if you want to check it out. But they do almost daily Hogwarts class quizzes. There are trivia quizzes, and the first th two or three people to get the answer correct gets 20 house points. So obviously I want to do my civic duty. Since I couldn't go to jury duty, I want to do my other civic duty and give Ravenclaw some house points. I love trivia quizzes, but timed trivia quizzes? Whew, I'm already getting the nervous sweats. Okay, it is starting. Whew. G writes like a whole story to go along with the quiz? Okay, so let me read this out to you. You walk into the classroom and you can sense that this is a no BS zone. The walls are almost bare, apart from an occasional Ministry of Magic Significant Achievements Award. Everything in the classroom is lined up to an inch, making it look more like a chessboard than a class. Oh! In walks Professor Vector, the teacher who's known amongst the students as one without a shred of sense of humor or ability to detect sarcasm. Weasley twins had a blast in her classes winky face. <laughs> she sets her briefcase down and straightens up a pencil so it lines up with the parchment on the desk. She waves her wand and you can hear the lock behind you click. She straight up refuses to let anyone in if they're even a second late. She sets out the slightest of sighs and looks up at the class. Welcome students to another lesson of the art and science of numbers. It is a discipline of precision. Its beauty is not met by any other branch of magic. Her eyes lit up for a second before her gaze drops and she appears even more tense than before, if possible. Yet some other teachers feel like my lessons have been unentertaining. She spits the word like poison, turning away and walking behind her desk. So today we are having a little fun. Never has she said a word that did not suit her worse. A fun quiz. She honestly seems in emotional agony as she continues was suggested of dates and numbers that are, by some less enlightened colleagues of mine, considered of interest or import. House points of value of 20 are going to be given away to those who answer first. She lets out a sigh that seems to contain such defeat it's almost saddening. <laughs> but the class perks up at the mention of house points, and a quiz can be fun, right? Even with Mrs. Funs beneath me right there. Okay. 
Now it's time for the quiz questions to come on in. What? Okay, new question. Okay, question one. Attention, Ravenclaws and Slytherins. That's me. What day did you know who killed Harry, Harry Potter's parents? Um, um, okay, he was born in 1980, so it was 1981, Halloween. I got 20 points for Ravenclaw. This is my shining moment. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Okay, question number two is for Hufflepuffs and Slytherins, so it's not for me, but we can still answer it anyway. What part Vila is Flor Delacour? It was her mother's mother, so her grandmother, so one fourth, right? And we were right. Oh, you can't see it. There. A quarter. Question number three is for Ravenclaws and Gryffindors. In what year was the Chamber of Secrets first opened? Um, okay, so it was 50 years before Harry was there, so that would have been 1943, 43? Because, okay, yeah, I think it was at the end of their time at Hogwarts. Okay, I need to stop talking, you just answer this. We were right, but we were also too slow. How is everybody answering this so quickly? Question number four is for Ravenclaws and Hufflepuffs again. Okay, according to Fred and George and the Marauder's Map, how many secret passages are there from Hogwarts to Hogsmeade? Not now, dog. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it was seven because she used seven for everything. Don't let me down. Please never use another <laughs> number. We were right again, but also only a couple of seconds behind. I'm trying my darndest, okay? I'm pretty sure that was the last question because we went against every other house. So the other ones, we can take our sweet time. Woohoo! It's me, Mario! Question five for Slytherins and Gryffindors. How many accurate prophecies does Professor Trelawney make? She makes two. One was obviously the big bad one about Harry and Voldemort when she was getting interviewed by Dumbledore for the divination position. And the second one was in Prisoner of Azkaban about Wormtail coming back and helping out good old Voldy. Voldemort, Voldemort, ooh, Voldy, 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 Voldemort. Also, did you know that I really like Professor Trelawney? Every time I had a cosplay a Harry Potter character, I always chose her. I just brushed out my hair and I just wrapped myself in a bunch of scarves. It seems like I really like the Ravenclaw professors. I love Lockhart, obviously. It was pretty obvious. And I love Trelawney. I also love Flitwick. And the final question, question number six for Hufflepuffs and Gryffindors. When Harry and Arthur Weasley enter the Ministry of Magic via public entrance, what number does Mr. Weasley dial to get in? I know it spells out magic, but I forget what numbers those are. So let's try and call somebody. So that would be six, two, four, four, two. So I think I got all of them technically right. Oh, there's more story at the end. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, I hope you had fun. Next week we are back at studying lost properties of number 288. The historical importance of such loss and magical techniques of reestablishing stability in twos. I expect a foot long essay on the significance of the number prior to its fall. <laughs> the class grunts in unison. The chairs start screeching as they're lazily dragged away. An odd few are excitingly gushing about a study group for the said essay. Study group? Did anybody invite me? As you walk by the great hall, you sneak a peek at the house points glass. Ravenclaw won! We finally win a house cup. <laughs> at Harry Potter World, Ravenclaw is in last place. I'm pretty sure Ravenclaw is also in last place at the Harry Potter experience in London. What's with all the Ravenclaw? Hate everybody. Finally, we're taking our victory. That was a lot of fun though. But now we are going to read. Actually, first I need to go out to the garden and pluck some green beans and stuff for dinner. We had so many green beans and some little cherry tomatoes. I'm trying to trick myself into liking tomatoes. It's not going so well. I am 74 pages into this book and a lot has happened, but honestly the first 50 pages were boring. I just was not invested at all. We got the Darkling who I don't like him and I don't understand why he has so many stands. People who are like, oh yeah, he's so cute. I wanna date the Darkling. Why? Why? I would like to have a talk with your mothers. We also met Storm Hond. Storm Hond. And I know that he's going to be important later. I really like him so far. I feel like 
he is a breath of fresh air in this book because I honestly don't care about any of the characters. I think that's the biggest part about this book. The plot is pretty interesting. I like the world. I like the different classes of magic users and trying to find magic amplifiers. I think that's really interesting. But the characters are just, this was written in 2013. They are 2013 characters. You know, it really upsets me that they don't call her the Sunmoner. Come on, Lee Bardugo. I thought you were a writer. I know I just said that Alina is a pretty stereotypical 2012 YA protagonist, but I think her greed and her being power hungry is quite interesting. Also, I still hate Mal. Goodbye. friends it is friday i just finished getting ready for bookmarked i need to set up my mic and everything but i just finished doing my makeup and i'm not sure if you can tell but my eyeliner i did really weirdly today i have no idea what was happening i was watching a video while i was putting on my eyeliner and my hand got carried away because i don't want anyone seeing it except you who i am actively showing my terrible eyeliner i'm going to put on my glasses so it hides some of the evidence. No one will know. I'm 70 pages from the end of Siege and Storm. Um, nothing has happened so far. Nothing. Is there a climax to this book? Because I'm really confused. The only person I care about is Nikolai. He's the only interesting character. I think it might just be a bad case of middle book syndrome that it's setting up all of the plot points for the last book. There's a lot of talk about political and military strategy, which is interesting but not entertaining. This will fulfill my requirement for potions class and potions class is not that exciting. So this kind of worked. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Throw some Harry Potter on it, make it better. Okay, we're gonna start the live show now. Turn to page 394. <laughs> the best impression you've ever heard, thank you. Hello, it is Zoe, the Victorian ghost here to haunt your dreams. Ooh. I got a nightgown and I feel very Jane Austen-y. So I finished Siege and Storm. It's a solid low three star book. Here is a chart I've put together showing the excitement level of the plot. The moments where there was action, I was invested in the story. The moments that Nikolai and Alina were, you know, bantering, that was cute, but when she was with Mal? No! He has as much romantic charisma as a sea lion. <laughs> I don't know why I just bashed sea lions, but there we go! So I finished this. This was 432 pages, but it felt like 800. I want something exciting, and I think I know the book that I want to pick. I'm pretty sure I want to read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson next because this is a murder mystery set at a boarding school. Also, I think this is historical fiction, which is exciting as well. I'm reading this book for herbology class because, I don't know if you can see, yes you can see, there are a bunch of vines on the cover. So let's pick our most herbology bookmark. Oh, oh yes, from the Creatures Collection, The Little Mandrake or Mandragora. I can hear the screams from here, which is perfect for a murder mystery. Something that I want to listen to tonight when I am reading my book is I want to try out ASMR. I've been really wary of ASMR in the past simply because it makes me kind of uncomfortable because the ASMR creators or the ASMR artists, the ASMR artists, is that what they're called? Because I really hope so. But they make a lot of 
extreme eye contact with you while they are making their noises and also you get like the tingles in your spine while you're looking deep into their soul and they're looking deep into your soul while you're tingling and I've just been very uncomfortable with that but I found an ASM artist that they don't include their face in their videos also the best part about them is that they have themed ASMR around Harry Potter, different rooms at Hogwarts and in the Wizarding World in general. They have ones for Game of Thrones, but I've only seen one episode of Game of Thrones. They had one for Howl's Moving Castle and it's all animated. So it just shows the room. It's nice and calming and you don't have any one-on-one -on -one eye contact reading all of your secrets. Right now I'm going to go wash off my face mask and then we are going to listen to our ASMR and read our murder mystery. ASMR murder mystery. I don't think that's gonna catch on. I know you are a thousand percent invested in my color coordinating adventures so Truly Devious' color is this blue. So I'm just going to come out and say it if no one else will, but I think that this Harry Potter ASMR might be better than the Harry Potter ASMR that Hannah Haley and I did on Hannah's channel. We had no idea what we were doing and it was um, just for laughs. I switched from the Great Lake ASMR to the Hogwarts Library one because obviously... Ooh, a creaking door. That really goes with the murder mystery. I think this might make me... A believer. An ASMR ho. <laughs> Is that what people who like ASMR are called? I hope so. I'm 32 pages into it and I did not realize, I didn't read the back of this before I started it. I didn't know it was half historical fiction, half present day. So half of it takes place in the 1930s. I was initially disappointed when it switched to present perspective for the first time because I thought it was all going to be set in the 1930s, but you know, I enjoy our main character, Stevie. For somebody who really likes mysteries, I really don't read very many. I need to fix that, and this is my first step in fixing that, rectifying that wrong I have acted against myself. Do I need sleep right now? I might. Howdy there, partner. <coughs> Welcome to Saturday. Well, actually Sunday, because it is 2.45 in the morning. I edited earlier and then I read for a good part of the day and then I was FaceTiming with Hannah and watching Avatar with her for a few hours. So the day got away from me, but I am loving this so much. That's also why I'm up at 2.45 a.m. because I can't put this down. It's a mystery, so I need to know what happens. I suspect everybody but there's one person that i have in mind this has parallel mysteries so there is the 1930s mystery and then there is a present day mystery and they kind of coincide i just want you to know that this is great if you want a mystery pick this up also i have the sequel on my shelf and the sequel let's go and see it the sequel has a red cover so transfiguration book here i come i honestly had low expectations with this because i've read a maureen johnson book before and i didn't really like it it was one of her YA contemporary books but this is her genre i don't know how this is going to be a series because there's a sequel and this is part of a trilogy the third one hasn't come out yet but I'm wondering if there's one overarching mystery or if it's kind of like Nancy Drew where there's different mysteries in each book but there's the same main character hmm also fun fact but I read most of this on April 13th and April 13th 1936 was the day of the kidnapping thing, the big thing that starts the entire book. So I felt like it was such the, it was the perfect day to actually sit down and read this. Ooh, fun fact number two, 
the main character stevie she suffers from anxiety and this is great anxiety rep stevie has a therapist she is on medication and she knows different coping mechanisms have i convinced you to read this yet i hope so i hope i'm doing a good job of conveying how much i am ba -da 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 -da. loving it good night <laughs> hello everybody welcome to sunday from my bath in my raven claw robes <laughs> In a bubble bath! I probably messed up these robes, but I don't know why I filmed this section of the video, but I wanted to. I'm washing me in my clothes. In case you wanted some actual tips on how to read in the bath, keep your elbows up, don't submerge your book in the bath. I have personally never gotten a book really wet in a bath, so I don't know what all you are doing. Also, sometimes I use this little reading caddy when I have something to drink as well. Okay, now I'm going to get out of the bath. It is now 11 p.m. and I finished Truly Devious. I loved it so much. It's so intricately plotted. The plot is airtight and the whole time I was trying to figure out who did it or what the mystery even was and I only figured it out right before our main character did which I mean might mean I'm dumb. There was a romance in it and I wasn't obsessed with it. It was okay. I came around to it in the end. The anxiety rep was great. The mystery was great. The school, the boarding school where it's set, I want to go there so badly because there are secret passageways and because I loved it, I picked up the vanishing stair for transfiguration if it'll focus our mcgonagall bookmark yay in reference to my question yesterday about this series there is an overarching mystery to the entire series everything is not wrapped up in the first book so it's not like nancy drew this is just reminding me how much i love mysteries i this is the first mystery ya series that i've ever heard about are there other ones in general if you have any mystery recommendations for me it can be adult mysteries YA mysteries some classic mysteries some cozy mysteries let me know so I am going to include somewhere on the screen the total number of pages that I read this week it's up from last week so huzzah that's all I can ask for and here is my updated bullet journal for the week if you were interested the doodles I made for the potions bottles and my color coordination, yeah! <laughs> it is April 15th so we are halfway through the month and mm -hmm, I've only read four books so far and my goal was to read 12 so... <laughs> hey, how you doing? Well I'm doing just fine, I lied, I'm dying inside. It is currently 3.30 p.m. and surprise surprise, I've been editing all day, I am still editing this 24 hour readathon vlog. I had five hours of footage and I have two hours of footage left to go through for my first draft. I'm also going to socialize this week. Wow! I'm going to go to a sleepover with my oldest friend. I haven't seen her in months. And then Maureen from Maureen Kiwi is coming down to Florida so we're going to have dinner or something. I don't know. We're going to see each other. It's going to be fun. I'm actually going to prove that I have friends. So let's talk about what I am currently reading. I'm only 48 pages into this so I'm not really sure how I'm feeling about it but we have met some new characters from the 1930s and I love following their storyline. Hi I'm here with Haley. Oh, <laughs> I hate it so much. Why I love you. Oh look at the bags under my eyes. Oh yeah they're Gucci. Oh yeah she Gucci. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're planning bookmarked right now and it's going to be all about rereading books but um, also I just love looking at her so that's why I wanted to FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. You're so cute. Oh. How to read in the bath part two. Don't get it wet. Put it on a tray. Yay. Also use frozen bubble bath. Read by Zoe approved. Behold. It is I, the girl who edits too much. <gasps> it is currently five o'clock and I've been editing since 7.30 this morning. I think it's time to call it a day and actually read something for once. I only read like 17 pages of The Vanishing Stare yesterday because I started re-watching Parks and Recreation 
yet again it is i think it's probably my favorite show of all time i aspire to be leslie nope i am big enough to admit that i am often inspired by myself my favorite quote from her is when she's making her dating profile and one of her interests is jamming on her planner if that isn't me i don't know what is i've spent the last few months brainstorming and i have some really great ideas and i put them in my idea binders I mean, they're color-coded, for God's okay. sake. But I've been staring at a screen for too long. Now I'm going to go stare at a page. I've read a little bit more of The Vanishing Stare. It's not as good as Truly Devious, but I think it's because it's a sequel, so it's kind of expanding the mystery and adding new elements. I think the ending of this is going to be really good, but for now, we're just being introduced to more drama and more characters. My favorite part of this one as well as the first book truly devious are the parts that are set in the 1930s because I love historical fiction and I just think that the characters in the 1930s were more interesting to read about but that's also probably because I think they're all a suspect in the murder so I might be looking more into their personalities I still like Stevie I still like her friends there is a non-binary character I believe named Vi? V? It's V-I. Now I have a hunch on who did the deed in the first book, who did the 1930s murder mystery kidnapping thing. It has not changed from the first book because a sequel in a murder mystery trilogy. How am I supposed to talk about this without spoiling anything? Now I want to make my reading tonight kind of special. So I'm going to light a candle. Here's one that I have owned for I think more than a year, but I haven't burned it yet because I've been saving it for a special occasion like I do with all of my fancy things. This is from In the Wick of Time. I got it on Etsy and the scent is Jane Austen's writing desk. I don't actually, it doesn't say what it smells like, but it smells kind of fruity. I can't, I don't know sense. It smells like Ikea. And then I want to listen to some more of the Harry Potter ASMR rooms thing. This room is the burrow, if it will focus. Ooh. Also, I painted my nails earlier. everybody. It is Friday. I finally, finally finished editing that dang 24-hour readathon vlog, so you don't need to hear me talk about it ever again. I did finish The Vanishing Stare this morning. My initial suspect. I was right, and I feel so good about it. <laughs> Except, um, there's more to the story, so I didn't catch every single plot twist, but that's how you know it's a good mystery. So I finished Transfiguration and now I need to finish History of Magic and Defense Against the Dark Arts. I'm just going to be honest with you, today I wasn't even sure if I was going to vlog because I am in a really bad mood. I am very anxious. I've been anxious since yesterday, since I uploaded my 24 hour readathon. I am a very anxious perfectionist and I spent so long on the video that seeing that it didn't turn out perfectly. I am so mad at myself. That's not the reason why my anxiety has been so bad today. It was already was pretty high and then that happened. And then I have bookmark tonight and Maureen from Maureen Kiwi is in town. So I'm going to go see her tonight. And then tomorrow I have to go to a sleepover with my best friend. I like all of those things. I like my friends. I like talking to them. But having to socialize when I'm feeling this way is adding more anxiety. And the fact that I'm so far behind in the reading challenge, all of those things are just making me <laughs> really anxious today. So I wasn't sure if I was going to vlog today because I wasn't feeling great and I didn't want you to see me in this state. But one of the things that was making my anxiety worse was the fact that I hadn't vlogged in a couple of days. You see, you see the dilemma? You feel anxious about doing things and then when you don't do those things, the guilt of not doing those things makes you even more anxious and it's just a vicious cycle. Anyway, this is a readathon vlog. You did not click on this video to hear me complain. So <laughs> we're going to pick my next book. I think I want to read a book for History of Magic. And I realized that all of the Harry Potter books are more than 10 years old. 
So all of them count for History of Magic. I know at the beginning of this readathon I said that I only wanted to read books that were on my TBR so that I could pare that down a little bit, but I feel like I want to read something soothing. I want to reread a book that is actually Bookmark's topic for the week is rereading books, so let's get the book. Actually, I have several copies of the first Harry Potter book. I have this one right here, which is the first copy that I ever read when I was six years old, but it is falling apart. I've glued it together several times and I'm really trying to preserve this, so I'm not going to read this copy because I don't think it could take another read through. I have the illustrated version and then I have this copy. Oh, this copy right here. The Scots edition is all in a Scottish dialect. Similarly, I have this version in Italian. I don't speak any Italian. I have the UK hardback that I got from the Harry Potter tour in London. First, look at this. And then, oh ho ho. And finally, I have the original US hardback. So I have options, which is good, but I think I want to read the UK hardback. One, because it's cute, and two, because it's small. It's the size of a paperback, but it's a hardback, so there's no danger of me destroying it. And of course, I had to choose this bookmark. I think that I need a self-care weekend, and this is really going to help with that. I just hit my head with this book. I really want to get that knowledge in there, study up for history of magic. And I don't just mean self-care in the form of face masks and doing my nails, although I really do like both of those things, but I mean more in the form of leaving the house and going to see friends, getting out of my head for a little while, spending some time actually reading and not on Twitter all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't want him to attack me. He's a ferocious beast. Oh. Let him win for once. <laughs> You're so cruel. Hi, so it is now 7.14. We just finished with Bookmarked and it felt so good to talk about rereading books with my friends. I'm about to leave for Disney Springs where I'm going to meet up with Maureen. I'm going to listen to my audiobook on the way to see her. The storm is still raging. I don't want to drive on the highway in the rain, but alas, I care about my friends. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. We are together. We're together. Hello. <laughs> we just went to a bar and it was great. We, I didn't have any alcohol. I did. I'm a pure she... little lady. <laughs> then we're gonna go do VR, Star Wars VR. I'm scared, actually. I'm really excited. I feel like I'm, I'm gonna so like excited. accidentally touch a stranger and they want, it's gonna be bad and I'm gonna get sued. It's, it'll be fine. <laughs> this might get copyright strikes if you're working because of we did the VR. It was so it much was so fun. It was so much fun. It was so great. We won. We saved the universe. We saved the universe. And now we're in the dark. Now. We're holding it hands so and shooting guns. Go what more amazing. amazing. <laughs> Hi, so it is midnight. It's past midnight actually, and I am home. I had a real nice couple of hours with Maureen at Disney Springs doing the VR, which is so cool. I've never done it before, but wow, I really was in the Star War. <laughs> I'm happy that I turned this day around, kind of. I felt terrible this morning and I didn't want to do anything. It was a mixture of me listening to myself and not pushing myself too hard with reading, letting myself reread a book, but also pushing myself to do things. I know a lot of people tell me that your mental health is the most important thing, that you should focus on that and take some time if you need it, but I am the queen of mental health breaks, so I think the best thing for me when I'm feeling anxious or depressed is to get out and do something, be productive, instead of letting myself have a little pity party in my honor. So that's my little piece of advice. If you're able to, go out and see some friends because they're really fun. That's why they're your friends. Hey everybody, welcome to Saturday. I am currently parked at a rest stop on the highway because I am on my way to my old college town to have a sleepover with my oldest best friend. We've been best friends since seventh grade when we bonded over Twilight. We were roommates our first freshman year of college. God, they were roommates. Currently, she's at vet school and I am so proud of her. I've been listening to Harry Potter during my drive. It's just been a whole bunch of fun. People were looking, I had to stop vlogging. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Hello. It is I, Zoe, and it is her, Hi. Rachel. <laughs> my best friend since seventh grade. We're watching, she's the man. Well, you can't see. Can you see now? Yes, you can see. 
We used to watch it every single sleepover, all of middle school, and it is the best sports movie ever made. <laughs> we also have some snacks and some doggies right here. You can't see, oh hello. Hi, this is Jade. Oh yeah, they're all pooped out because they were at the dog part. I'm not reading because I am socializing instead. I was cheated by you and I think you know when. So I made up my mind it must come to an end. Look at me now. Will I ever learn? I don't know how. But I suddenly lose control. There's a fire within my soul. It is 11 p.m. on Sunday, so I'm going to end this vlog. I didn't get a lot of reading done the last couple of days because I was socializing. Whoa! <laughs> but I've been listening to the Harry Potter audiobook before going to bed and while driving, so I've gotten a little bit of the way through that. There's only nine days left of the readathon, and I have many books left to read. <laughs> so that'll be fun. I'm really happy that I took this weekend to see friends and take care of myself. I feel nice and refreshed. I feel content. So let's do the flip through of the bullet journal, see how much I read this week. Let's have our total page count. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below how is your readathon going? Have you read? What has been the best thing that you've read so far? With that being said, I'm gonna go to bed. See you in the morning. <laughs> Bye! Oh no, this was a bad idea! <laughs> oh goodness, hello!